getting interested in people and bringing you important information and topics that are essential so that you can stay safe in the environment. And also, you can find out exactly what the Philadelphia Fire Department is doing in the community and how we interact with so many important people. I would like to also talk about the fact that we have our fire safety representatives here today. So we'll hear something from our fire safety representatives as well as our special guests. One of the things I want to talk about before we got in today is the fact that people who buy smoke alarms have a higher risk of dying from fires. We want to make sure that you have all of the smoke alarms that you need in your house, that you do all of the things that keep you safe. And I need to use our city safety as an example of how you and your family can be safe. First, that first level of our city safety is, of course, the smoke alarm. We need smoke alarms, one on every level, making sure that they are tested, making sure that they work properly. And now, here in the city of Philadelphia, they must be 10 year, 50,000 pound smoke alarms with five individual batteries. We want to make sure that they're in the proper place and everyone knows what to do when they sound. Which brings me to that second leg of the school. And that second leg of the school says that you know and understand. Have fire and practice are occurring the state plan. That means that you bring all of your family together. You sit down with your family to make sure that they know two ways out of each and every morning in your home. The other thing that you have to do is make sure that you have the special assignments. That's what I call the special assignments for folks that need uh, maybe to have a physical uh, uh, challenge. You have to take care of maybe it's a younger child, but you want to make sure that someone is going to make sure that that child gets out when they hear that uh, smoke alarm sound. Or maybe it's someone who just needs a little extra help, a little bit more time, and you want to make sure that you help them out. So make sure that everyone that needs a special assignment has a special assignment, and that includes your friends as well. Okay? But first things first. Get that smoke alarm going on. Everybody want to get assignment. Everybody out of the house. That third level of school is the one that keeps it practice and not an action plan. And that is the home fire safety checklist. That home fire safety checklist has about 30 different items and maybe five or six categories. And if you go down that home fire safety checklist, one of the things that you can do is assess yourself. It's either yes or no. You either have it done, you've done the project, you uh, changed the habit of uh, smoking, take it outside, you need uh, your electrical uh, outlet with a guide around it because you've been using an extension cord and you want to get rid of that extension cord, you want to set that project up so that you can check yes, it's done. And when you get your entire home fire safety checklist, check yes, you get it from some your family, your loved ones, and those who come into the environment with you, the highest and the best opportunity to stay safe. And that's what this is all about. And finally, the last level of the school is where you just take a home fire safety class. That means that we're going to do it. We're going to action it. We're going to make an action plan. We're going to do all the things that you need to do. Take this information that we have for you and make sure so that's the home fire safety class. Okay, right now we have a very special guest. I'd like to uh, invite to Freedom from Fire, uh, Captain Richie. It's Captain Michael Richie. He's our operations captain for the Fire Prevention Division. Very special and important work that he does every day. And uh, Captain Richie, welcome to Freedom from Fire. Can you tell us a little bit about the mission of the fire department and just what you do? Thank you, Commissioner. Thanks for having me. Uh, I came to the fire prevention division three months ago, but I've been here 20 years on the job. I've been 20 years in the field confronting fire and enforcing, and I've done many little things from my experience for the fire prevention division, prevention division to learn some new ways of helping the fire prevent you. That's a good thing. Now, uh, Came up through the ranks and still moving through the 
Jesus on the stage said, the last test of our son. He's going to be the judge. The son of the crown, the judge. Congratulations, he said. He said, if you take a step up to the leadership, not just the supervision, but the leadership, yeah, we can double the management to high level the management of the school of the five of us. And in our confidence in you. Now, we're um, experiencing a change of guidance through this business now. Uh, we have gained the experience of change through uh, uh, this position. I was first teach by the time in 1992. Uh, previously, I was in the United States Navy, I was a cryptic technician. At the fire station, I was first to Chinatown, and then quickly moved to West Philadelphia. I spent the majority of my time out there, and since I've been promoted to 2005 at the Carolina, I spent my time in North Philadelphia. So I've been to three different districts and learned to interact with the community and the mix and bring my message to it. Now, that's the big thing. You know, I mean, you get out there in the community, put it on the school ground, visit with the schools, uh, visit with the churches, go into the community centers, um, not just check the hygiene and the inspections, but really engage in the community. Uh, that's really special. And we appreciate the fact that. Decided to take this step up. Now, related to the position, uh, exactly what was the uh, operations done? The operations company in fire prevention, prevention division um, helps to provide logistical support to the lieutenants and the firefighters who go out and operate 42 different programs, different times throughout every year. So, I will um, provide with them. Uh, guidance in, in, in the course of their duties and help them to uh, get to their, their areas that they need to be effective. Now, um, that's very important because uh, operations is key. And in those operations, uh, those are the things that, you know, that's the end of the tips and that's the execute. So, uh, very important position. Now, I know when you're out in the field, like I just talked about many of the things that we do. such as churches or uh, retirement centers. But the thing that needs the bar when you're out in the field is when you get out, knocking on the doors and going into the people's homes and making sure they have smoke and hunger. Uh, and the other thing is the school that you mentioned. The checklist is there for you. And hopefully you get the equipment to take advantage. Uh, absolutely. You may have carbon monoxide. We don't talk about it as much, but absolutely just as important. And it is a lot of fire safety checklists. Yes, sir. And, and I can tell you because it's not on us and you can't see it. So a lot of times the only way out is to have the carbon monoxide out and stay in the ground. And you can, you can research those things on the World Wide Web. Absolutely. Uh, I've noted some of the areas that you talked about that are very opportunities to engage the community. And I know sometimes we're fortunate that when we go out, Some of the things that you found uh, particular, particularly interesting related to our things. Like, what are some of the things that stand out? What, what does the diverse community that we go out in, in West Philadelphia, for instance, and I've learned more out there, we have different occupancies. We have schools and we have apartments above them. We have um, a university city area right there that's a very booming area right there. So the neighborhood of the changes. And if you spend quite a bit of time out there, 10, 15 years, you really do can look back and see how much it has changed. There are things that agents to work with all the people and the businesses around the district, putting posters up. Uh, again, spreading, uh, spreading the message that you need to get things done. Absolutely very important. Now, uh, describe a lot of those different areas, and especially the different areas that you work in. A variety of food, a variety of those people. Some of those different things. When we stop and think about freedom from fire, and we stop and we look at it, do we really miss the action? Now, that kind of like pulls it all together, right? Do 
unique disruption that, that's new to us and that's pretty much a piece of data to the Unix test operation. And in the next one, what we're going to try to do with that program is to have lots of firefighters identify the high risk areas within their districts, geographically speaking, and then go out there and plan something else to try to reduce the risk. It's, it's a very it's a, it's a very simple procedure, but it can it can be it can be a challenge. But I'll tell you, it's a simple procedure. But it certainly has a methodology. It looks like it's a specific thing, gathering data, uh, assessing what the uh, particular risks are in that community. And it can be varied from one fire safety and education district to the next fire safety and education district. So it really talks about concentration, focus, uh, that Captain he or she must be involved with uh, gathering the data and supporting uh, the officers and then make uh, analysis and uh, making the decisions and prioritizing. You say it's simple. I see a methodology that's a lot of obvious, but when you dig in and you do the work, you get the outcome that you want. That's the things that firefighters like to do. They're going to go out there and knock on doors and making sure that the folks have the things that's not about them and to keep them safe. Well, we are stopped in the middle of the fortunate that we saw not yet so very well amplified as we would like to see. Some of the worst numbers were not the worst numbers that we had reported, but we can see that this can be seen. And uh, I know that we don't rest on our lives and our fire prevention division, uh, fire code monitors, uh, folks who uh, put that forth for us uh, to make sure that we get these things done. And achieve those numbers. Uh, when I stop and I see that, uh, what will we do? How do we keep in mind that we can really see the outcomes from this little methodology of community risk reduction? I see that as uh, something that will give us the outcomes that we need. My quick reaction is to go back to the new program that each and every year we try to identify the priorities we have and we report, such as elderly people who are, who are electrical fires. We'll go out there and specifically look at that risk and try to reduce it, but it's going to be interesting to see what the outcome comes up. You know, one of the same things that we may be putting on some of our building speed reviews when they come in. And uh, people who are obviously in uh, some areas uh, may have limited you know, resources in those areas, so uh, they become very dangerous. So we are really in this transition, and the mayor is very clear about uh, what he's trying to accomplish. He wants this to be first class city. He wants people safe, the safest city in America. Uh, the community, all of those things, uh, the education, all of those things coming together. Our mission uh, is going into the community and identifying the risk. We have opportunities to tie to those strategic plans. So uh, I'm hoping that we can be successful in from fire safety and education district to fire safety and education district. We can get to Mexico. So uh, what kind of challenges do we have to say, Northeast versus uh, South Deep Southwest. Um, I, I think in the Deep Southwest, it's a pretty stable environment that it's not, it hasn't been changing. Uh, the Northeast is on the other hand, is a cool environment. You have a lot of work. You have a lot of work out there that you need to look at that might have big risks. And it's going to come to the district and try to diagnose it to put them in our books and put that data out and see what's going to happen uh, to the outcome. Absolutely, just like uh, 2035 when the uh, city planner uh, looked at that fire data and said, where's the population shift? How will the fire department uh, react to that? Not so much react, but be proactive with it. Uh, being proactive to uh, how do we react somewhat to what we find now with those uh, changes in our areas. So uh, community risk reduction, uh, I believe it's going to have a big to how we do business, to the things that we do, and also how we protect our community. So uh, I'd like to say thank you very much, uh, Kathy, if I could get you to pick your mission. Good luck with your, uh, the time that you feel you get for her uh, not too long uh, from now. And uh, we really appreciate the fact that you stay the course. Uh, they just thank you. And you have so much to the table uh, as far as uh, being just a great human being and a Philadelphia firefighter. Thank you very much. So, uh, one of the things I'd like to ask you to do 
Say thank you very much uh, for staying tuned to this segment. Uh, we have another segment coming up, so we thank you for staying by. And uh, we will be right back. I'm joined by Mr. Cal Ray, philanthropist, the president of the Cal and Lucille Goldman Foundation. Also, I'm Larry Five from the Seas of Philadelphia Five Department. Together with Jefferson University's Acumen Westside College of Media Arts and Design, we are able to present to you the Philadelphia Fire Safety Act. This act can be accessed through a desktop or laptop computer. But what's really convenient is you can get it on your smartphone. This app is loaded with useful information, covering a vast array of subjects relevant to you and anyone who has ever had a question about the Philadelphia Fire Department or emergency services they can provide. Let me tell you about some of the features of the app. There's a fire safety checklist, a list of over 25 questions that help you check to see if your home or apartment is safe. There's an emergency preparedness section filled with tornadoes, hurricanes, terrorism, and even earthquakes. There's a door and safety section. This gives you general information about safe home living and what you should be thinking about should the fire alarm sound in your building. There's a section about the emergency services that the fire department provides, along with EMS and CPR tips, and they're very handy hospital work kit. The Red Cross feature can give you immediate on the spot step by step treatments for common first aid emergencies. And don't think our information act doesn't consider every member of the family. There's even an entry for and about your pets. Today, I'm just giving you a snippet of what you will find in our new fire safety app. What we're telling you is it's all free. Now, you get pretty patient. What would you like to tell our person? Hey, fire safety up. Stay alive. Are you done? That's right, Cal. Yeah. To get the new fire safety up, go to freedomfromfire.com slash FSF. Again, that's freedomfromfire.com slash FSF. And oh yeah, did I tell you it's free? This is Stephanie and Dana Alton uh, of the Cal Media Lab. They are ministers uh, today and leaders in our new church. Okay, and uh, they are at the Transformation uh, Center. That's at 2618 Hunter Park Avenue. And our minister, Dara Oden, uh, he's, uh, both of you are married. You know, your family, your family, and just having fun and you have fun. And never mind, that's great. We have uh, four children. Mm-hmm. We have two children. And uh, they do work. They're absolutely, and I know that's a good thing. Now, you've been involved with your mom working over the Town Rock Association for two or three years in the hospital. That's fantastic. And um, working with community leaders and the 
taking uh, great offenses and taking some of their lives and they get sick and are very destroyed. And carry on um, for, for, for the city. Yes. I know if anyone goes to the city, it's good for the city. It's good for the city. And as they leave, that's what the Lord will do. And uh, you understand that means the same thing that you can do. And that's what I'm saying. You know, I love my father, and I am responsible for this. 
Thank you very much. And we will continue with you.